it's still meant he's probably just as tired and as if you were both head to head throwing one shot after shot I think you probably think more in fights like this because you know one shot can change the whole fight so you can't afford to make one slight mistake or switch off for, for one second And to the fifth round, George Groves competing in his 19th scheduled 12 round contest tonight. And Callum Smith, it's the ninth time over the championship distance. Groves has gone the 12 round course on seven occasions. Callum Smith has completed the 12 round distance on four occasions, including his most two most recent outings as we see the explosive heavy hands of George Groves and the numbers he's stopped inside of six. But Callum Smith has gone the 12-round championship distance in the quarter and semi-final of the World Boxing Super Series against Scoglin, where he put his man on the floor in the 11th round and the late substitute, substitute Nicky Holston. Right-hand success from George Groves, but Callum Smith... If Damon Lowe goes with a straight right hand the body or just jab the body, and then Smith after he throw a few low, he'd always try and come over the top. I think he was trying to get me to bring the hands down, but... I kind of knew, I say I've watched him fight a lot, I kind of knew it was coming and I knew I couldn't afford to try and be too smart and you know, reach down to, to, to parry the, bo the, the body shot and he had to just stay tight and compact and not leave any gaps. And the main objective was to come through without picking up an injury from a clash of heads or a stray elbow from the rugged substitute former kickboxer Niki Holskin. He said that he'll box to the level of, opponent, of his opponent and promises a career best performance tonight. He will be able to impose the tactics that have been devised by the corner in this contest. The corner comes up with the tactics, of course, but then it's down to the boxers to fill in the blanks and go out there and execute. Who will be able to do that over the championship round as we see the numbers through this juncture of the contest? I think for the first time in a long time with George Groves, he's in a contest where usually you're waiting for him to land that big shot. To, to really get the, the crowd going, but here, it, it's the other way around. You, you, you seem to be waiting for Callum Smith to land that long straight right hand as he comes forward. So the boots on the other foot a little bit here. Still a disciplined display. This is a better round from Groves. He's been busier it's because I think he knows he's probably behind. A left jab a few moments ago from Groves and then a sharp lead right hand out of the orthodox stance. Callum Smith with another telescopic right hand. It was countered by Groves and then a good left jab from Callum Smith, but look at the double jab success from George Groves. Well, I think it was a... Still to this day, I think he's in that okay. I think the foot tangled and then he, he swooped through. And, but I remember being annoyed myself after this round. I, I thought I started the fight very well. And then I think because I ate him in round three and I knew I could ate him, I kind of stopped jabbing and neglected my jab and was looking for, for the perfect right hand with the perfect single shot to... to Try and hit him again, and I would sit and you would talk every time the kid don't go and look, look for the perfect shot, just stick to what you were doing, and everything comes off a jab. And I stopped jabbing and I let it go out with me with the jab again. Not a lot happened, I didn't take any big shots, but I just let him touch me a few times with the jab, and of course I lost that round. And I'm just thinking, stop letting him creep back into the fight. He, I don't think he'd come out and done a lot to win the round, but I give him if I just allow him to just flick a little jab and not retain them and not jab with him. That's a terrific jab there. A good right hand counter from Callum Smith. A good work with the left hand from George Groves here. The, the, the feet get tangled all. Oh, you know, it's six or one half a dozen, I suppose, as they say. It's working every time. Just then you meet him. When you meet him, you go chest side to the body. 15 okay. seconds. And your back's against the ropes and you're backing up. It's always interesting listening to your opponent's corner work after the fight to see how, how they were trying to beat you and how people would go to try and beat you because you always just work on how you can beat your opponents and it's nice to look and see what, what gaps people see in you and how people go about beating you. Richie Woodall, one of a whole host of British boxers who have enjoyed success in the super middleweight division at the world level. Right hand was 
a good shot from Callum Smith once again, but countered immediately by a jolting left jab from George Groves. It's a super shot there from Smith again. Long straight right hand. Groves so set in his ways with that low left hand of his. Responds well. A couple of decent shots there. Smith's got his timing and his accuracy right here tonight. Up to now. And what a rich team of success these two for middleweight division has been four British boxers 13 men have held world championship honors at 168 pounds or 12 stones Before mentioned Richie Ward all alongside me also got George I felt with the, the, with the height advantage I had I felt Grove was having to faint and push his feet in and then jump in with his jab to make up the, the the ground where, where he was a lot shorter so a lot of the time he'd faint and then go to throw and the minute he'd faint I'd just take that little step back and he'd always just stop his attack and stop whatever was coming after it and sometimes when he just jabs straight from the hip it's hard to read but a few times he'd faint and then try and spring in with a jab and I find that as the fight was going on I was starting to read his patterns and I say a little push away but always just trying to kind of stop that attack Smith staying in the pocket, targeting a corkscrew right hand. The follow-up left jab did get through, as did another jolting left. Groves, though, using all of his experience, remaining composed, continuing to fire feints in the direction of the challenger. Jolting left jab, fed in Groves' direction from Smith. Groves responded with the same shot. Callum Smith being six foot three. And George Groves, you would think, would favour a, a, a contest more in at close quarters, but... He's six foot three, but he's very, very good on the inside for such a tall man. Good variation in his work, good uppercuts, and left hooks also. I think he and in the fight was the first time he started throwing right hooks to the head. I think he mentioned in an interview before, and uh, I've got a good catch left hook. And him no, not mentioning it, I knew that he'd be wary of it. I didn't think he'd throw many you know, right hooks to the head, he threw a few straight ones. And, a lot of his right hands went down into the body and then this round he threw a couple of jab right hooks to the head and I caught him on the gloves but I knew at some point in the fight no matter what tactics you've been drilled into you, you revert back to type and you start throwing the shots that you like to throw and he does like that shot and then he threw a few where I thought now you're throwing it I'm going to have to start counting it sooner or later and that, that's the shot that you know, the start of the end. Another very good round of boxing. Some good boxing from Smith, long range right hand there, bang on the button, but again, doesn't really go forward and, and fall, fall into his opponent. That's probably the secret to his, his success when he has closed the, the gap here. Groves had a little bit more success, but Smith still very capable on the inside. Groves trying to get through there with that right hand. Callum Smith keeping the guard nice and high. Comes back with his own short-range work. But the, the success from Callum Smith is definitely all at long range for me. I knew this round, I knew the last couple, the although the last one was closer than, than the fifth. I knew I was starting to let him creep back into the fight after the good start they had, and they were couldn't afford to know whether they lost this round, and the fight becomes close again. So I knew I was starting to need to keep me leading, I needed to start taking hold of the fight again and let my shots go a bit more and start this round a little bit quicker and start letting my right hand go a little bit more and pushing my feet in with it. Betray him as George Groves suggests that it often does during long contest. Groves backing up once again. Smith working incessantly behind a trip hammer left jab. Groves covering up well, trying a right hand to the body. Couldn't find a mark. Chopping right hand from Smith wasn't too far away once more. Still maintains that discipline display here. Yeah, Joe saying turn the tempo up. I knew no second half of the fight is where. Groves was known for not always gassed a few times in his career. I know it wasn't the hardest, fast paced fight, but I knew I couldn't afford to let him sneak back into him. So I knew I needed to step the pace up, and whether he'd come up with me or not, I knew I was confident in my own engine and my own, own ability to do the trial with a good pace. 
There's two jab right two from the bouncing. Then I thought the next one he throws, I'm, I'm countering it. Short. Now both men looking to bring their right hands to, into play with increasing regularity. Sharp shooting left jab. He just before he throws it. From George Groves. This is a contest that really does demand your full attention because both of these men are capable of ending the bout with one shot. Good right hand to the body from Groves. That was a low blow beneath the belt line of Callum Smith, but he didn't complain. Where in, in the part left the previous time that he ate and he counters with it, you know, with solid shots. He threw a right to counter there and there was not in him. And at that point, he's there for the taking. And then when he's down there, I remember thinking if he gets up, you've got to finish him. You can't let him still be in the fight two or three rounds later and still with any chance of winning. I knew I had to finish it, so we would have got up. I'd have probably foot to the pedal and just went for it because I knew he was a lot more hurt then than he was earlier in the fight. Like I said earlier, at, at that level, in the highest level, you can go from being a chess match, think and fight, no, not a lot of big shots landed, to one big shot landed, one footy landed, and the fight finished, and that's where you've got to, you have the concentration level, you can't afford to slip up at one point, because that went from being a, you know, a, you know, it wasn't exactly a war, but one shot, and then 30 seconds later, the fight's over, and you've always got to be aware that that could happen to you or your opponent, you've got to just be the one to they should go and set the traps and get, get your shots off rather than walk onto your opponent. He joins the legendary figures of Joe Calzaghi and Andre Ward to become just the third super middleweight champion, the third holder of the ring magazine championship belt.